Hey, praise the Lord, family of God. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. So let's pick up in the book of Philippians chapter one and we're getting towards the last verse. Actually, it is the last verse. Hallelujah. Look how far we've come. Praise God. I'm, I'm excited and I've, I've read the comments and I'm, I'm thankful that, um, you know, people are appreciating my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We're appreciating how God has, uh, you know, uh, bless me to go to another level in him uh, to do these daily teachings um, by the power of the Holy Spirit as we go through the epistles uh, right now we're going through Philippians and then I'm also doing Colossians and so I'm thankful that you know God is stretching me and using me uh, because uh, I'm just a vessel you know I want to be used by him that was my prayer uh, when I first got saved I said Lord use me you know, how, how do you want to use me? <laughs> I always like to tell this story, but I'm going to say it again. You know, I was so afraid. I can't, I just can't tell you how afraid I was, you know, as a babe in Christ, even though I still wanted to be used by God and he told me what to do. I was so afraid that, you know, he told me to, uh, you know, give out cards, you know, tracks, whatever. I was so afraid just to go up to people to give them a track that I used to, um, take the track and I used to put them on windshields of people's cars and hope that nobody saw me put it on the windshield because I didn't want them to, you know, think I was breaking into their car or whatever or, you know, they come and stop me and say, hey, what are you doing? But I was just so, I was so scared. But now just look at God, but God, hallelujah. When we take that first step of obedience, when he tells us to do something, I mean, you know, there's no limit, okay? Okay, it's, uh, the, the resources of God are inexhaustible, hallelujah, but he just needs a willing vessel that will listen. And when we listen, we obey, right? And so I'm thankful that uh, God is using me just like he's using you as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight, hallelujah. So we're in verse 30 of Philippians chapter one, and God says to the apostle Paul, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. So remember the last verse, Paul had told us that it's been granted unto us not only to believe in Jesus Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. And so the Philippians, they were well familiar with what Paul had went through because remember in Acts chapter 16, uh, he had received the vision when the Holy Spirit told him not to go uh, to the east and uh, they had, uh, there was a vision of a man from Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. And we read about what happened when he went over there. And one of his first encounters was uh, in Philippi. And what happened in Philippi? Well, you know, uh, that's where Paul was jailed, right? He was jailed, uh, him and Silas, uh, with the Philippian jailer. And what happened? At about midnight when they were singing songs, the Bible says that there was a great earthquake that happened and uh, all the prisoner shackles were loosed, right? And then once the prisoner shackles were loosed, the prison guard, the Philippian jailer, he got uh, terrified. He was about to kill himself, right? But Paul interceded and said, don't kill yourself. We're all still here. We're all accounted for. And what happened? Even, the, even in the midst of Paul being in prison, okay, a bad situation uh, for anybody, right? But he was suffering for the cause of Christ. Even in the midst of that bad situation, not only was the Philippian jailer saved, but his whole household was saved. And Lord knows how many other people were saved just from that experience, right? Because of Paul suffering for the cause of Christ because he was beaten with rods, right? He was beaten, uh, you can read the account in Acts chapter 16. He was beaten with rods. Can you imagine that? you know, for the cause of Christ. So he was suffering, okay? So the Philippians knew exactly what Paul was talking about because they, they were encountering the same thing. And then as he's writing this letter to the Philippians, where's he at? He's in the prison in Rome, again, in prison. So Paul is a firsthand example of what it is to suffer for the cause of Christ. And so that should encourage us Hallelujah. That should encourage us because as we know from what the Bible tells us, we don't have the spirit of fear 
And that's why I had to grow out of my fear. Because God has given us a, a not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Right. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us who's producing the fruit of the spirit where we're no longer afraid. We're no longer terrified of our adversaries. Right. Because when they're persecuting us, it's a sign of their perdition. Hallelujah. But it's a cause for rejoicing in us because we're glorifying our king. OK, because like my shirt says, hallelujah. Jesus is king, right? He's the alpha and he's the omega, right? And so we glorify him in the midst of all of our struggles. We glorify him in the shadow of the valley of death. We glorify him when he takes us to the mountaintop. We glorify him 24 seven, no matter which situation we're in. Like Paul said, I know how to abound and I know how to be abased, okay? In any situation that we're in, that God puts us in, okay, we're to give God glory because we know that these light afflictions, when we have to go through the suffering part, these light afflictions are nothing compared to the eternal weight of glory that is laid up for us in heaven. And so that's what we have to look forward to. That's what keeps us going, knowing that Whatever we go through in this life is nothing compared to what awaits us in the future. That's why Paul was such a great encourager. That's why he wrote half the New Testament to tell us, believers in Christ, the Gentiles, that, hey, it's okay. It's okay when you go through various trials. It's okay. You can still rejoice. Okay. And again, I say rejoice. And that's why we need the body of Christ, because when one suffers, we all suffer. That's why we use this technology here in 2023 to encourage one another. Hallelujah. To say, hey, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Hey, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hey, you're more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. We encourage one another. Hallelujah. We edify one another. We build one another up. We say, hey. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is going to give you strength, okay? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. We encourage one another as we go through these situations because we need one another because we're all one. Hallelujah. We're one in him. We're one in Jesus, right? We're one, okay? If one rejoices, we all rejoice. If one suffers, we all suffer. We're one, and so we need each other to encourage one another. And this is exactly what Paul is doing as he wrote this letter to the Philippians. Even in the midst of another jail, okay, on the verge of being put on trial for his life. And ultimately, we know that he was martyred, right? People believe that him and Peter were martyred together, right? But God, hallelujah. <laughs> but God, hallelujah. Even though this tent may have to be put off. Even though this tent may have to be put off. We know that we have a heavenly tent. Hallelujah. <laughs> we know that we have a heavenly tent that we're going to be clothed with. And that heavenly tent that we're going to be clothed with. Hallelujah. is going to be immortal. Incorruptible. Undefiled. Okay never susceptible to death, never susceptible to pain, never susceptible to sorrow, no more tears, hallelujah. We're gonna be able to think about where we wanna go and then we're gonna be there, just like Jesus, right? He walked through walls, right? He appeared and disappeared, hallelujah. Okay, he ascended to heaven, okay? We're gonna have a body just like unto his glorious body, hallelujah. And so we have a hope, we have a future, we have a destiny. We got a place that we're going to be at forever. And that's before the throne of God, listening to him speak face to face forever and ever and ever, telling us everything about him. Because that's eternal life. Eternal life is to know him. And so I'm thankful that we're already on the journey, getting to know him because it's all about him. This is the hymn book, right? This is the hymn book. His story, it's the hymn book. It's all about him. Jesus Christ, that's it, that's all. Okay? I ain't got time for nothing else. I ain't got time for nothing else. I ain't got time for no shenanigans. 
I ain't got time for no games. Okay. I ain't got time. Okay. I ain't got time. Okay. They say, what time is it? Jesus Christ. They say, what time you got? Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all. They say, what time you got now? Jesus Christ. Okay. That's the only time I'm on. I'm on Jesus Christ. Okay. That's the time I'm on. They say, what time is it? Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all. I ain't got nothing else. Hallelujah. That's why I rep him. As you can see, Jesus is king. Wherever I go, hallelujah, I'm going to talk about Jesus because that's the time I'm on. That's the only time I know. The only time I know is Jesus Christ. I don't know nothing else. Hallelujah. Okay. That's what Paul said. I determined not to know anything among you. You talk about time. Paul said, I determined. He was, he was determined. He, he, he had made it up. I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay. That's what I'm on. Okay. Because God, he put me on. Hallelujah. Because it's been granted unto me not only to believe in Jesus, but also to suffer for Jesus. So whatever comes my way, as I arm myself, as I put on the full armor of God every day and keep it on, never taking it off, as I clothe myself with him, as I walk in the spirit every day, every moment, I'm being prepared for whatever comes my way. Hallelujah. So that if it even comes down to me giving up my life, literally as a martyr, God is going to prepare me for that moment. Hallelujah. And so I rejoice, okay, because I'm indestructible, okay? I'm indestructible, okay? I'm indestructible. Even if they take my life, I'm still indestructible <laughs> because I'm just like Job. Even though skin worms may destroy this body, yet with my own two eyes, I know that my Redeemer lives and I will see him. Isn't that what Job said? <laughs> Okay. Even though skin worms may, may destroy this body, yet with my own two eyes and not another, I'm going to see him because I know that my Redeemer lives and at the last he will stand upon the earth. I know that. They say, what you know? Jesus is king. Okay. Job said that. I know that. Okay. Job said that. I know that. <laughs> they say, hey, Job, what you know? That at the last... King Jesus, he going to stand on the earth. I know that. You say, what you know now? I know that. Jesus is king. Hallelujah. You see, and so that's the time I'm on, and I'm thankful that we're on the same time. <laughs> that's why God brought your feet to watch this video right now, because we're on the same time. Hallelujah. So let's keep that same time, which is Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all. So if the Lord says the same, we'll pick up tomorrow if he tarries and we'll get to Philippians chapter two and we'll see what the apostle Paul says through the power of the Holy Spirit as we continue to go verse by verse to talk about the goodness of Jesus. I love you saints of God. Keep the faith and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might because he loves you. In Jesus name, amen.